Hi, and welcome to Headspace. So no matter what's going on in your life right now, no matter how many thoughts are racing around your mind, no matter how the body's feeling, just take a moment to sit down and take a big deep breath, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. As you breathe in, a sense of taking in fresh air, the lungs expanding. As you breathe out, a sense of letting go of any stress in the body, in the mind, just feeling the muscles soften and relax. And close your eyes if you'd like to, one more, breathing deeply in through the nose and out through the mouth. And just take a moment to pause, allow the thoughts to come and go, and then just gently opening the eyes again. It's collective worship. The candle's lit. What did Jesus say? That's right. I am the light of the world. I was having a lovely dream. Do you remember your dreams? Hands up who has dreams when they're asleep. Do you remember your dreams when you wake up in the morning? Are your dreams always good dreams or do you sometimes have bad dreams? Okay, hands up, who has daydreams? Hmm. You know what I mean. Your mum or your dad or your teacher speaks to you and you don't hear because you're busy thinking or dreaming about something else. Some people believe in another type of dream and this is called a vision. Visions are very different because they seem to come from outside a person, not from inside the head like a, like a day or a night dream. It's as though they're looking in a picture of something that has happened or is going to happen. Quite a few of these people in the Bible, quite a few people in the Bible had visions. Today we're going to hear about us, uh, some people in the Bible who had a vision that changed their life. Long, long ago, about 700 years after Moses crossed the Red Sea, and about 700 years before Jesus died on the cross, there lived a man named Isaiah. He was a prophet, or someone whom God chooses to speak for him. For a long time, God had been sending prophets to tell others what God wanted them to hear. Often God had them warn his people. If they didn't have faith in God and wouldn't obey Him, then He would stop protecting them. And there were many big, strong nations out there that wanted to come and destroy their cities and make them slaves. But even when the bad things God warned about finally did happen, God would have His prophet tell the people that they should still believe in God and keep hoping. God controls the future, and He promised them that one day they would come back home. Often when God told Isaiah to promise their return home, He would also have him promise an even bigger hope, one that was for the whole world. God said that much farther into the future, He would also send a Messiah to free the world's people from sin and death. Messiah means one who is chosen by God to free people. One important prophecy about the Messiah that God had Isaiah write was this. The Lord himself will prove to you what he has promised. A young, unmarried woman, a virgin, shall become pregnant with a baby son. And people will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. We know now that God was promising not only that He was with His people in their hard times, but He was also promising Jesus' birth, which would happen 700 years later. Later, God had Isaiah describe what this Messiah would be like. Though Isaiah wrote this long before the Son of God became a baby on earth, 
he described a baby who would someday return as the greatest king of all. Isaiah wrote, All of us are now living in the darkness that causes all bad things in the world, such as war and sickness and death. This kind of darkness is caused by our separation from God, who is the light. But God has promised that one day His light would come into the darkness. The Messiah will chase it away. And then there will be celebrating like a great victory party all over the world. For unto all of us a child will be born. To us a son will be given. And that child will be greater than all kings forever. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor. This child is the mighty God. He is the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. But later in his writing, this is also how God had Isaiah describe the Messiah. Before he would rule over the world, he would suffer terribly. This is hard to believe, but the Messiah will grow up with people and not seem much like a king. In fact, many will hate him, and he will know what it is like to suffer great sadness, just as we all do. Many will even think it must be God who is hurting him, but it's actually because of us that he will be pierced. It's because of our crushing others that he will be crushed, so that we could have peace. He will be punished. We all are like sheep that have left the shepherd. We've separated from God and gone our own way. But all the suffering that being lost sheep causes, God will cause to happen to him. He will be the lamb in our place. Without opening his mouth to complain, he will be punished and put to death like a criminal, though he never killed or lied. The Messiah must suffer and die because of our sin of being separated from God. But then, God will cause the Messiah to live long. Then the Messiah will save many from darkness and death. God gave Isaiah these messages, not only for people at that time, but also for us today. He promises to deliver us from the sin that is part of our world now. But he also promises that one day, Jesus the Light will return to chase away all sin and darkness from the world. Through Isaiah, God promises us that no matter how dark it may get, Jesus' light will shine and win. That was all a very long time ago. What can we learn from this story that can help us in our own lives? I think we can learn at least two things. The first is that Christians, Jewish people and others believe that God can use all sorts of people to do his work, even people who don't think they're good enough. The second thing we can learn is that when we are asked to do something hard, if we say yes and really do our best, we can often do much more than we thought we could. Think about the things that people ask you to do your parents, your teachers, your friends. Do you say yes and do your best to help them? Time for a prayer. If you'd like this prayer to be your prayer, it's arm at the end. You're welcome to look at the candle flame or you can put your hands and your eyes together. Lord, thank you that you love us and listen to us, even though we sometimes do wrong things. Help us to listen to you and to other people and to say yes when we're asked to help. Amen. Well, that concludes our collective worship for today. Remember, work hard, be kind, look after yourselves, and I'll see you around school.